Hey everyone, Retro Stage here. I want to do a video uh, to show the new NES adapter for the Retro Blaster programmer. This NES adapter will allow you to do your uh, dumping of NES games, dumping of your NES save files, as well as writing to the uh, NES Blaster series of programmable boards that I've got. So uh, that would be like this would be uh, this board here set up for UO ROM or UN ROM, um, but that's we'll go over that here in a sec. But uh, so I wanted to show first off how to safely remove the adapter because I've been asked a few times by people that said, ah, I bent my pins, what do I do? Well, the best way to take this thing out, use both hands, you're going to grab both, uh, all four corners of the uh, programmer adapter and you're just going to rock forwards and backwards a little bit until you loosen up and you can see, you can see the pins starting to show here. So you loosen that adapter right out keeps the pins nice and straight um, this slot is supposed to be tight it's it's going to be tight because it's supposed to hold the adapter in there properly uh, so it doesn't just fly out all willy-nilly so um, the first few times it's going to be a little bit more difficult to pull out but again four corners rock back and forth it will come out so um, any issues with that you can always contact me through email so the uh we're trying to get set up for NES here that'll be the first thing we'll go over with the new software uh so i've just put the NES adapter in we also have to switch it to five volts if we haven't already mine's already on five volts but mm -hmm. if we were on n64 and we were writing games to that uh that would have to be set to three volts NES is a five volt system as well as sega genesis uh, super nintendo and game boy game boy color those are all five volt systems uh, N64 and Game Boy Advance are both 3 volts. So we just make sure we're on the 5 volt setting. Now we're ready to go for NES. So putting your games in. So cartridge label should be facing towards the front of the programmer. So towards the Retro Blaster logo. Pop it in there. We're ready to go. So uh, now we're going to bring it over to the software side and we'll be able to show how uh, all of that stuff works. Okay, so we're over at the software side. Uh, you can see some changes have been made since the last Retro Blaster uh, release. Um, I've updated the user interface now to show uh, each console in its own tab versus having it um, in a drop-down box style. And that was just trying to clean up the user interface a bit. Um, a progress bar has also been added, so you can see... Uh, that things haven't stalled uh, and that's the other thing is that the GUI now has got proper threading uh, in the background so when you go to write a game the user interface doesn't stall it'll uh, continue going and you'll see your progress bar um, going ahead so uh, Mario Brothers is a NROM game so we want to dump it and uh, test it in, in an emulator so what I like to do is pull open the NES cart database. So this is the Boot God uh, website, and I'll put the uh, website in my description. So what we did is I just looked up Mario Brothers, and I want to find out the contents of this game. So uh, mainly the most important stuff is right here. So we want to find out the size. So when I go to dump the game, so let's come back to the software. I'm going to have these running together here. So, um, first off, we're going to select mapper type. So we're going to go, this is an NROM game, and we're going to click on dump. So from here, we just have to, uh, just have to give it a name. So I'm going to go Mario Brothers. So next thing it wants to know is, please enter the size uh, of the PRG. So over here on the Boot God uh, database here, you'll see PRG size, PRG zero says 32 kilobytes so it says please enter the prg file size in kilobytes so easy enough we're entering 32 so we're dumping 32k and then please enter the chr file size in kilobytes over here on boot god it says it is an 8 kilobyte chr size so we're going to enter an 8 and then it wants to know what the mirroring type is. So mirroring uh, is how a lot of at least the discrete games like NROM, CNROM, UNROM, so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of those had hardwired mirroring types. So for this one here, it wants to know if it's a vertical or horizontal mirroring. So in uh, the Boot God database down here, it says mirroring vertical type. 
So we're just going to enter a V for vertical. Hit OK. Now, game should dump. It dumps the PRG usually first and then the CHR. Game is dumped. So pretty quick, only took five seconds. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and uh, let's test it in an emulator. So I'm going to just go and open it up with uh, FCEUX. And there we go. This is the game we just dumped. And it plays just like it should. So we know that that dump worked properly. Um, so now if we wanted to do a different game, let's do, um, let's do a game like... I don't know. Battletoads. So, same thing. I just, you didn't see, it's off camera, but I just entered, uh, put Battletoads into the uh, programmer adapter. Battletoads, let's see, let's look it up in Boot God database here. So, I just typed in Battletoads, and it's going to be right here. So, Battletoads does not have any CHR ROM or RAM, or no, it has RAM, sorry, no ROM, um, but it doesn't have any PRG or uh, CHR file size mentioned here. So all we have to do, we're going to go up here, select, uh, it's an AX ROM game. You can see here it says NES AO ROM. So we're going to dump cart. We're going to call this Battletoads. PRG file size is 256K. So we're going to enter 256. The When you select AX ROM, the mapper, uh, as your mapper type, it knows there's no CHR file size, so it's not going to ask you. It just dumps the PRG. Um, come over here. Here's our file. Let's test it. There we go. We got Battletoads. So dumping and everything works works really quickly as you can see um and once you've done it a couple of times just looking things up on the database it's really really straightforward um where you can get some extra things let's go do uh let's dump ducktales 2 so ducktales 2 come in here uh ducktales that's it one word yep yeah. so ducktales 2 right here this is a UN ROM game. So UN ROM has got hardwired mirroring. So we're going to go click UN ROM, dump, DuckTales 2, PRG size 128 kilobytes, enter that. Mirroring type is vertical. Again, it says vertical right here. So it's going to dump that PRG file. Um, so this is most of the discrete mappers uh, already shown here. I haven't done CN ROM, but that's it's the exact same process. Come in, select DuckTales, try it out. Works great. So we know that the dumping of all that works really, really well. Um, now if we want to dump, uh, let's do Adventures of Link. So this is an MMC1 game. So I'm going to look it up here. We'll go... Uh, um, actually, I guess I could probably just type Zelda. Zelda 2. So, Adventures of Link. So we've got a PRG size of 128K, CHR size of 128K. Um, mirroring, you'll see it says Mapper Controlled, so we don't have to worry about setting the mirroring type. WRAM is the next section uh, to go over, and this is going to be what your save your save files are stored on. So it's got 8K of WRAM. So I'm gonna come in here, select MMC1, we're gonna dump the cart. We're gonna go Zelda 2. It's got 128K PRG, 128K CHR. Now, something that uh, you may notice here, CHR file size, it's got CHR, or enter a zero if the game uses CHR RAM. So if this was the original Legend of Zelda game, that game does not have a CHR ROM. It's got CHR RAM. So for that one, we would enter the file size for the PRG and zero for the CHR RAM. So um, this one here got CHR ROM, so it's going to dump 128K of that. Does this game use SRAM for battery-backed saving? Yes or no? 
So this one does have SRAM, so we're going to enter Y for yes. And it's going to dump the PRG, dump the CHR. And again, it automatically does all that uh, all that uh, NES header stuff for us. So if I come in here and select the game, here we go. There's our uh, Zelda 2. Now, if I wanted to back up my save RAM, so let's... Uh, Let's dump the save content. So I'm going to go Zelda 2, label it that. It automatically saves it as a .sav file. So this would be the same kind of save file most emulators would use. So the amount of SRAM was 8 kilobytes. We're going to dump that. Okay, PRG RAM has been dumped. And then you can see it's got our save file there and you can open it up in a hex editor and check it out if you like um but yeah it's it's gonna be gonna be all in there um let's see if i can play this save file yep there we go so that's just uh whoever had this game before me um that's the stuff right there so that's my save dump and uh, so that's that's really dumping. Like dumping is is uh, pretty much covered for that. Um, let's try to write a game. So let's do. We're gonna write Castlevania. To um, actually, let's write Ducktales too because we just we just dumped that game. So let's write Ducktales too. So we're gonna. I just popped the uh, UN ROM program or the uh, Nest Blaster into the programmer. So this is my UN ROM cartridge. So popped it in there. So I'm going to go over here, select UX ROM, and we're going to write to the Nest Blaster. We're going to take DuckTales 2 and write that. So the uh, programmer automatically strips the header off. It reads the header contents to find out uh, how much the ROM size is, uh, if it has backup RAM or not, all that sort of stuff. And it does it all automatically. So there's no extra settings that have to be done. Um, it's just pretty much click and go. So now that I've dumped it, or uh, written it rather. So it's been written. Let's pop it into the console, turn it on, and there's DuckTales 2. So really, really easy to write a game to these uh, and Nest Blasters. Um, and that would work for... Uh, for pretty much any of these when they when they're uh, when they're released, right now the Nest Discrete Blasters are the only ones that I've got on the website right now. Um, so again, your your discrete mappers, um, the MMC one and MMC three boards are coming soon. Uh, really, they're just I'm just finishing the prototyping side of it, and then those are going to be up. So, um, other systems that we've got. So let's do. Um, Let's cover some of the other systems. So I'm going to pop my Sega Genesis uh, adapter into the Nest, uh, uh, Retro Blaster programmer here. And let's try to dump Sonic 2. So pop that into the programmer. And now for my different tabs here. So we're going to go over here to Sega Genesis. And you can see I've got, uh, it, it's got just a few options here. Write Sega Blaster, so the Sega Blasters will be coming out soon as well. Um, dump ROM or dump SRAM. Now, there's also an option to override the ROM dump size. That's for um, so when the when you're dumping a game for Sega Genesis, I've got it set up so it reads the internal header of the game to see how large the game is supposed to be, and it dumps it based on that number. But if you decided you wanted to only dump let's say one megabyte of a four megabyte file, you could override the ROM dump size, click dump ROM, and then it'll ask you for how big did you want the game dump to be. In this case here, I want to just dump the game as it is. So we're going to go dump ROM. I'm going to go and dump, this is Sonic 2. So it'll automatically start. It tells us that it's a one megabyte file. So it's going to dump 1,024 kilobytes of ROM. So that's just about finished. There we go. So now go over here. Here's my Sonic2.smd. So SMD is your Sega Mega Drive 
uh, file format for emulators. Let's, uh, let's try to run that. Looks like it worked. So there's our game. So Sega dumping, again, really, really straightforward stuff um, in comparison to anything else that we've got on the uh, Retro Blaster side. Um, SNES, the tab is here, but it is not done yet. So right now, ROM dumping isn't working yet on the SNES. It's coming right away. Uh, Game Boy, the ROM dumping isn't working quite yet, but the SRAM and the writing to the Game Boy Blaster is working. Game Boy Advance is working. Um, I don't have the option for dumping the EEPROM data off of those games yet, or the Flash RAM, or Flash ROM, sorry, but it, uh, it'll do SRAM dumping and writing. So, um, and that Game Boy adapter is going to be coming here soon as well. So that's this guy. So I'll pop that into the programmer right now. And uh, let's do a test. Let's do, so I'm going to dump Metroid Zero Mission. So pop it into the programmer. So like that. Now Game Boy Advance again, it's a three volt system. So I'm going to change that switch to three volts. We're on the Game Boy Advance tab. Let's click on Dump ROM. So I'm going to go Metroid. Oops. Okay. Now it's going to enter. Ask us for the size of the game. Um, if you don't know the size, then uh, there are databases that you can look up that information. There's also NES ROM or uh, Game Boy Advance ROM header uh, tools you can use, and I'll have those links in the description as well. But I believe this game is um, 8 megabytes. So we'll dump that. And I'll just pause the video for a sec to let that dump. Okay, so it's just about finished dumping here. And uh, once that's done, we can test out the game in an emulator. Make sure that it works. Okay, so it took just under 2 minutes to dump the game. So let's come... Uh, oops. There's our Metroid Zero Mission. We'll open that up. You can check it in a hex, uh, a hex editor, and usually you'll see the uh, the name of the game here, so it says Zero Mission. Let's uh, open that with our emulator here. There we go. So that looks like it works fine. So, and then again, you can dump the SRAM for that as well. You can write the SRAM. Um, it's it's very very easy to use there's no no uh extra commands you have to put in it's just click and name the file so not much else to go over there um a couple other changes that have been made to the software is uh the upgrade button has been removed the manual updater was only working probably about half the time uh, depending on what version of windows you were running so people were running into some trouble with the firmware upgrades so i've removed the option uh, to do it with uh, the inbuilt built-in software version i'm now uh, doing it with the official uh, program made by atmel to do the dfu upgrade for the firmware that version works on every version of windows it doesn't matter what you're running it is guaranteed to work so that's the version that uh, we're going to do for now until I can get the uh, software version um, that I was using to work properly on all Windows versions um, and that's now in the uh, I've if you when you do the new download for the new 2.0.1 software version it'll be in your firmware files and then there's the installer for Atmel flip so in the readme it does go through all the instructions on how to make sure your update goes through once it says verify pass that means that the firmware has been updated unplug your programmer plug it back in and then you're ready to go um, if there's any questions or anything about how the software works definitely feel free to comment or um, contact me through email or twitter i'm always available on either of those and uh, otherwise thanks for watching